Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, so yeah, as you've probably guessed by now, if you've watched uh, many of my videos or if you've met me in person, um, that uh, there's not really any topic that is off limits with me. I'll talk about anything, no matter how embarrassing um, or personal. So, um, one of the things that I have actually been asked um, quite a few times um, by women is uh, what does it mean when my period blood is stringy? That's a very common one. Um, you know, or, or why is my period blood brown? Or So, I do actually get asked these things. Um, so uh, that's what I'm going to be talking about today, following on from my videos about the colour of your poo and the colour of your urine. Yes, today we are talking about the colour and texture of your menstrual blood um, and how to sort of recognise if there is a problem. So um, your menstrual blood, like any other bodily fluid uh, can really provide important information about various health issues, um, particularly in this case about a vaginal infection. Um, during menstruation, the body sheds tissue and blood from the uterus through the vagina, and this discharge can range in colour from bright red to dark brown or black depending on how old it is. So here you can see uh, quite a wide range of possible colours for your menstrual blood, um, ranging from the usual sort of red, dark red, brown, to black, pink, orange, or even grey. Now, I should stress, um, you know, we're talking about obviously menstrual blood, but if you are pregnant and at any point have had any bleeding, no matter what colour it is, do get it checked. So, what do all these colours mean? Well, that's what we're going to talk about now. So, we were talking there about... Um, you know, when the menstrual blood is sort of uh, ranging from bright red to dark red and brown, black, um, dependent on how old it is. So blood that stays in the uterus um, long enough will actually react with oxygen or oxidise. And any blood that has had time to do this will appear darker. Um, so this is why anyone with endometriosis, when you've had a laparoscopy, you may have seen the photos that they take. And one of the signs that they look for is these endometriotic lesions, which will appear usually blue or black, sometimes dark red or brown. Um, and any um, sort of blue or black, uh, these endometriotic lesions, it's basically because you know, it that blood has been sort of sitting around in there doing nothing. Um, hormonal changes and health conditions will also obviously affect the colour and the texture of our period blood. So let's start uh, from the sort of dark end of the spectrum. So we're talking about black brown or very dark red blood. Now this may appear at the beginning or the end of a period. Generally it's a sign of old blood which as we've said has had time to oxidise, first turning brown or dark red and then eventually becoming black. So quite often um, you know when you first start your periods uh, the blood will be it's kind of this funny sort of fairly thick brown gloop, um, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, and that's sort of obviously where you've had this initial bit 
kind of sat there for a little while it's probably oxidized um, but you know once your period starts flowing um, you know it tends to be a fresher sort of more normal red color um, but these dark you know dark shades may also indicate a potential blockage inside the vagina particularly if any of the following symptoms are also present so this may include a fever difficulty passing urine any foul smelling discharge itching swelling in or around the vagina um, or of course brown or dark red blood or even black now um, during pregnancy obviously it's not going to be menstrual blood but during pregnancy any brown blood or spotting may be an early sign of an implantation bleed okay so we're talking in the first few weeks here brown discharge or spotting during pregnancy when it's established may indicate a miscarriage or an ectopic pregnancy it's really important for women who experience spotting or vaginal bleeding during pregnancy to speak to their GP midwife or obstetrician and just get it checked out now in terms of um, what we call lochia or postpartum bleeding so once you've delivered baby lochia is the body's way of expelling uh, sort of excess blood and tissue from the uterus usually starting with a bright red blood um, and then becoming a darker shade as the flow decreases now the duration of the lochia varies usually it will pass within the first few months after delivery but if there is very heavy bleeding after giving birth again you must speak to your doctor now let's talk about the more normal sort of bright red blood that we probably all expect so a period may begin with bright red fresh bleeding and then towards the end of the period may well darken now some people may find that their blood stays bright red throughout their period um, spotting or bleeding between periods may indicate either a growth in the uterine lining so something like polyps or fibroids potentially cervical cancer um, or even a se sexually transmitted infection so something like chlamydia or gonorrhea so again if if you're you know this isn't just a one-off thing do um, you know do get it checked out um, and if, particularly you know if you're having other symptoms as well um, other symptoms of cervical cancer include heavier periods or periods that last longer than usual um, if you are having uh, maybe pain or certainly bleeding after sexual intercourse if there's any pain in the lower back pelvis legs loss of appetite unexplained weight loss or of course if there's any foul smelling discharge these could be indicators of cervical cancer but of course you know do go get your smear done regularly you know it takes like five minutes it doesn't hurt you know do get it done just to you know be sure that everything is is perfectly normal um, now sometimes your period blood may be pink um, pink blood or spotting happens usually as a result of um, the period blood mixing with cervical fluid which makes perfect sense because cervical fluid is sort of clear or white um, so you mix that with the bright red fresh blood it's going to go pink so uh, this can usually happen due to either using hormonal contraceptives um, which can lower the estrogen levels um, possibly sexual intercourse may cause small vaginal or cervical tears 
blood from these tears can then mix with uh, you know the vaginal fluids thus creating a pink discharge um, but also um, significant weight loss or an unhealthy diet or anemia can also bring about a more pink uh, menstrual blood now again during pregnancy if there is a pink discharge um, containing tissue alongside cramps again this may indicate a miscarriage so yeah do get that checked out now maybe a slightly more unusual one that people didn't actually realize was possible is orange period blood now um Blood, again, that mixes with um, cervical fluid um, may also appear to be orange. Um, but if there is any vaginal itching, discomfort, foul smelling discharge, then this is pretty much going to be a sign of an infection. Usually something like bacterial vaginosis or trichomoniasis both of which are pretty nasty infections and um, they're not just going to go away. You need to get antibiotic treatment. Um, so if you have these symptoms, do either go to your, to your nurse at the GP and get a swab done or go to your local sexual health clinic um, and they can probably get you sorted out there and then. Um, and usually with those infections, the, there will be a foul smelling discharge. Um, sometimes uh, the discharge can even be quite green um, and that will smell quite fishy. Um, so yeah, fishy fanny is never a good thing. Do get it checked. Now, um, and then potentially, again, another more unusual colour is grey menstrual blood. Now, this, again, will more than likely be due to an infection such as bacterial vaginosis. Um, and this really occurs due to an imbalance between the harmful bacteria and the natural flora in your vagina. Um, so, again, you're going to need antibiotics. Other symptoms of bacterial vaginosis, again, will include, as we've just said, itching in or around the vagina, that foul smelling, usually fishy um, vaginal odour, potentially that may be quite green. Um, and also you probably will have burning or certainly some discomfort when passing urine. Um, and as I say, this, this you're going to need antibiotics for that. Uh, now, during pregnancy, um, in um, you know the later stages of pregnancy, a grey discharge, unfortunately, again, may um, more than likely indicate a miscarriage. Um, so, again, you know, any bleeding in pregnancy, you need to get it checked. But, uh, you know, like with poo and urine, if you've seen those two videos, um, diet um, will certainly cause some changes in, in the colour, um, but also hormonal changes, general lifestyle, age, um, which again is going to, you know, affect the hormone levels um, and environmental, you know, environmental factors. They're all going to cause variations in period blood any unusual blood color and irregular bleeding should be referred to a gp or gynecologist so that is the color covered now what about the texture so um the texture of your period blood can really um range again quite a lot um you know you have obviously the normal blood texture that you would expect it can on one end of the scale you know become almost sort of quite slippery um or quite thin and watery and then of course on the other end of the scale you've got clotting 
Um, you may notice it's quite stringy um, or even gritty. So we're going to talk about what those mean. So first up, we're going to talk about clots. Um, this is often sort of the big one that people um, are a little concerned about. Um, now, healthy period blood uh, may contain visible pieces of the uterine lining. This is completely normal. Um, but if there is very heavy bleeding or if there are large clots, this may indicate menorrhagia. Um, which is basically very heavy, painful periods um, or unusually heavy periods lasting longer than seven days, which can lead to anemia and fatigue. And depending on whether you've got other symptoms, you may even um, be investigated for things like endometriosis. Um, it is recommended that you see a doctor if you have bleeding that requires changing a tampon or pad after less than two hours. Um, you know, if this is sort of like become sort of a regular thing, you need to get that checked out. But also if there is blood with clots that are the size of a penny or bigger, again, do get that checked out. So what causes menorrhagia? Well, various things, um, hormonal balances may be uh, the culprit, um, possible pelvic inflammatory disease, intrauterine birth control devices, so the coil, um, growths on the uterus such as fibroids or polyps, if there are any bleeding disorders, um, so something like uh, von Willebrand disease, uh, certain medications such as aspirin and anticoagulants, um, you know, may actually cause, you know, increased bleeding um, and also cervical and uterine cancer. Um, so if any of uh, the following apply, you should again see a doctor or gynecologist. So if there is any new or unusual vaginal discharge or if you have irregular periods that change in length and also that change in in the amount of flow from one month to the next uh, if there is any bleeding after menopause if you have missed three or more periods if there is that foul smelling vaginal odor or a thick grey or white vaginal discharge, particularly when combined with itching or even swelling around the vagina or a fever. Do get it checked out. Now, um, if there are large frequent blood clots in a heavy and long period, this could indicate quite a range again of issues. So it could indicate uterine fibroids, which are basically muscular growths that line the uterine wall. Or something called adenomyosis, which is basically accumulation of tissue in the uterus. PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome, where you get cysts and swelling in your ovaries. Um, although quite often with PCOS, you may even have absent periods. Uh, endometriosis, uh, which is a common one, growth of endometrial tissue outside of the uterus. And as we've explained, if you have a laparoscopy and there are like these blue black lesions on the laparoscopy films, this is a clear indicator of endometriosis. Also, um, large uh, clots may occur due to polyps, um, which are basically small benign growths in the endometrial lining, or um, even endometrial cancer, um, which is where you've got malignant tumours um, in the reproductive organs. There may also be indicators of bleeding disorders, thyroid conditions, 
complications from an IUD coil um, or even vitamin K deficiency because of course vitamin K is responsible for the clotting process in the body. Um, so potentially you know blood tests are going to need to be taken to check hormone levels and to check the thyroid and and, and you know possibly a few other things. So anyone who is pregnant again as we've said any bleeding, unusual vaginal discharge, you need to speak to your doctor. Now, so that's clots covered. So quite a common one that I get asked about is why is my period blood stringy? Um, and yeah, sometimes, you know, you may sort of go to the toilet and there will, you know, sometimes be like this stringy bit of blood kind of half hanging out. Um, and yeah, the first time it happens, you know, you may be a little bit concerned because it's a little out of the norm. Um, but actually, blood um, that is stringy or sticky or a bit clumpy um is actually completely normal um stringy blood is basically it's just a blood clot again leaving the uterus um it will usually happen in the first couple of days of your period where the bleeding is heavier um stringy blood will often have a sort of a sticky consistency um and this is usually it has a high um, endometrial tissue content and it will usually be either a dark or bright red blood but yeah it's normal so unless you know you've got you're getting a lot of them and you're getting those other symptoms that we've just talked about with um, sort of alongside blood clots um, you know if you've got any of those other symptoms then yes you may want to get it checked out but stringy blood alone in the normal scope of a period. Um, so clumpy blood, uh, usually in the later sort of part of the period, there may be clumpy blood or sort of almost kind of jelly-like, um, which is usually caused again by blood clots passing through the body. Um, and again, this is, you know, normal. Um, if it's a bit jelly-like, there may even be a bit of sort of vaginal mucus in there. Um, and again, this may be bright red, dark red or brown, um, depending on how long, you know, it's been in there and whether it's oxidised. Uh, so looking at the other end of the scale, um, it may be quite watery and this will often happen towards the end of a period. Blood may be more watery, it may be a bit more pink um, or it may darken due to oxidisation. So um, bright red and watery blood is fresh and straight from the uterus. Um, so again in pregnancy this could indicate a miscarriage um, if you're not pregnant it could potentially indicate some sort of injury um, so you know or even if you um, enjoy quite rough sex um, that could also potentially cause this so if um, basically if you are experiencing bruising um, sort of quite you know more easily than normal fatigue shortness of breath um, you should see a doctor this could be indicators of anemia um, if you get increased cramping during your period pain or bleeding during or after sex clots that appear to grow larger in size as your period progresses if you're soaking through pads every hour or soaking through your outer clothing um, you know, or even if you're 
sort of having to change tampons sort of you know more regularly than every two hours uh, if there's a watery discharge that is bright red or grey um, or if there is heavy period bleeding that increases or continues after seven days then do get this checked out um, so yeah hopefully um, as I've shown the colour and consistency of your period blood um, a lot of the time these things are completely normal but it can provide useful information um, you know regarding certain other health issues but the most important thing is that you recognize what is normal for you healthy period blood will typically vary um, you know from bright red to dark brown or black blood or discharge that is orange or gray is pretty much an indicator of infection especially if you've got that fishy fanny to go with it get it checked women who experience bleeding during pregnancy of course must see their midwife obstetrician or gp to get it further checked so that is pretty much it about your period blood so hopefully that has answered any questions you may have um, do feel free to comment below if you have any other questions or you can message me uh, on Facebook or Instagram. I'm on there as the Medical Massage Lady. Um, and um, feel free to subscribe to my channel. There's lots more videos on there, lots more coming up. Um, and um, I, I will come back to you uh, with any queries you have. Um, and um, you can also access information through my website, which is nearly complete. I feel like I've been saying this for months, um, but it will very soon be properly up and running. That is www.themedicalmassagelady.co.uk. Or if you are a massage therapist, um, do take a look at www medicalmassagelady.com which has information about various courses um, so that's all from me um, as I said there will be more videos coming up um, but for now take care see you next time